Thank you. Hello. Good morning. What, can you tell us about the resumption of the attacks in Mariupol? Uh, yeah, well, it was a big uh, little win yesterday because uh, people were under debris for more than 50 days. And uh, uh, with joint efforts of Ukrainian authorities, UN and Red Cross, people uh, were evacuated. But as you mentioned before, very correct, they uh, haven't, uh, haven't arrived yet uh, to the destination and attacks have already started. So uh, we will just uh, keep uh, looking for the situation and uh, hope it will come to the good conclusion today, later. Well, what is the prospect of further evacuations from the steel plant in Mariupol? Well, uh, yesterday President Zelensky made uh, his statement as well as other uh, high uh, officials that with uh, joint efforts and uh, really we are receiving a huge help from UN and the Red Cross as well. So they will uh, keep continuing to evacuate people, but again, you will never know exactly because Ukrainian authorities have been trying to do that for the last uh, two months, but they haven't succeeded. They, they have not uh, stopped uh, every day doing that, but only yesterday they could uh, make some success. So we will keep observing this situation. Well, we were expecting on Monday that the 100 people who were able to get out of the steel plant uh, would have reached Zaporizhia but that has not yet happened. Do you know why they haven't yet made it to Ukrainian-controlled territory? I have, I have not. I also know uh, that's what you said. I don't know details because okay. still it's difficult to get yeah, anything uh, on the road. Let's talk about what EU energy ministers have been discussing. The, the idea that the EU would impose a ban on the use of Russian fossil fuels in the near term, particularly when it comes to Russian oil. Now, Germany, a key nation in this discussion, has said that it would be in a position to observe such a ban by the end of the year. Hungary has said it doesn't believe that such a policy would uh, be productive. What is the view in Kiev of people you speak to of, of what the EU should be doing when it comes to energy from Russia? Well, honestly, I think uh, our government uh, is still needs to push and uh, do a diplomatic, uh, in diplomatic way, of course, to make these countries that you've mentioned to change their opinion. So I think that uh, it's um, it's, it's already a great uh, thing that Germany uh, and Hungary as well are mentioning to uh, give up on that. So, of course, we are welcome that, and I think there are more to come because people see, all the world see the atrocities that is going on here, and it, it is just needed to be stopped in any way. So we, we, will, we, we just have to push further. Okay. Maria Dritska. Uh, thank you very much for joining us from Kiev here on Newsday. This is Newsday on the BBC World Service. Rob James and Mike Williams all the sports. Thank you, James. The sporting sanctions continue to tighten on Russia. Football's European governing body, UEFA, announced on Monday a new raft of measures to prevent Russian clubs and national teams from playing in its competitions next season. Russia have been barred from competing in this summer's Women's Euro 2022 and have been replaced by Portugal, a the team they beat uh, in qualifying, whilst Russian clubs will also be banned from UEFA competitions next season, such as the Champions League and Europa League. Russia's bid to host the men's European Championships in 2028 and 2032 is now also ineligible. Cristiano Ronaldo scored a penalty and had a goal disallowed as Manchester United beat Brentford 3-0 in their final Premier League game of the season at Old Trafford on Monday. Elsewhere, Bayer Leverkusen consolidated third spot in the German Bundesliga with a 2-0 win over Eintracht Frankfurt, but there was defeat for fifth place RB Leipzig. And the Tunisian tennis star Ons Jabor will play in the quarterfinals of the Madrid Open tennis later after a three-set win on Monday over Switzerland's Belinda Bencic. Thank you, Mike. He's back in half an hour. Right, let's get some business news now, and Andrew Wood joins us uh, from the BBC 